impossible to you. You have to understand who you are and walk in who you are. All the dogs have to say right now. Shut right here. I'll keep saying it. You have to understand who you are, what you've been given, and know that you have a contract to operate in it, and you have to stand in it from hell or high water. It's simpler to get up here and give you three points and give you a good hope and a, and a song. But I'm giving you food for life. If you can hear me this morning, the most significant thing in your life is to know your covenant. You have to know the agreement you have with God. If you don't know it, you're going to be under condemnation all the time, Mr. Cotton. You're going to be in guilt and you're going to be in lack if you don't understand. Every time the enemy comes up against you, you're going to feel defeated when the Bible says he already gave you victory. Are you all walking with me here? So now, I have this covenant with God. I know the enemy is going to attack me in my belief. So let me close this by saying the first thing i got to know is God says oh, it's going to be a better covenant established upon better promises. So I have to know that this covenant is based on his promises. God is the covenant talk. I am a covenant team. So all I need to do is believe him and obey his instructions. Right about it. The first instruction he gave me is that he said, I will not remember your sin anymore. Amen. Glory to God. Did you just read that from the Bible? Yes. Was that God's word? Yes. Then how, how come it's so hard to believe that? Many of us can't walk in righteousness because we're bound by sin. Yes. Not the sin we do and the sin we're thinking about. Right. Right. You're right about it. <laughs> That's true. I'm going to still preach this. Listen, the maturity, the foundation, oh, glory to God. The foundation of your covenant is this God says, I'm going to deal with you as an individual. I'm going to write my laws on your heart, place them on your mind. You know what laws mean? The word law, it means. Parceled out instruction as in prescription usage. God says, I have a prescription for your life. I'm going to put it in your heart and on your mind. But only when I need to put it there for your next move. That's why people got to understand. Don't judge nobody when you see them because you don't know where they're going. Don't let them be talking about where you're at because you don't know where you're going to end up. Because God is putting a prescription on your heart. And sometimes that prescription will lead you to the cross. Sometimes they're going to lead you to the drug house. Sometimes they're going to lead you to the bar. Sometimes they're going to lead you to being employed. Sometimes that's for still going to lead you to place because he's working in you to will to do according to the pleasure. Oh, oh God. Help me get through this Holy Ghost. So the first thing I have to understand in my covenant if I'm going to win is I know that I have no sin issue with God. Amen. Amen. So every time somebody brings up sin to you, they are violating your covenant. Can I tell you this, Pat? Is this hard to receive? Is this a hard saying? According to the word of God, God says, I'm going to make this agreement with you. I have plenary power, so I'm going to deal with you this way. I'm going to put a prescription in your heart for your life. I'm going to reveal it to you when I need to to get you to the next place. But I'm not going to remember nothing has to do with sin. Because when I put you through things, if I was dealing with sin, I'm going to have to punish it. Because some of the things I'm going to put you through are going to look like sin. Wow. When I get ready to process you, yes. it's going to look bad. Yes. So I'm, what I'm going to do is remove this issue of sin from the covenant. So that when I process you, you don't have to be guilty. You just have to shout and say, this is the Lord doing. It is marvelous in my eyes. I know that God is working to think. He's working to get it for my good. But according to the purpose, he said, I'm going to remove sin. Now, I'm gonna, I, I, I thought we had passed this Holy Ghost, but they bring me back. Somebody need to hear it. God says, I'm going to remove sin. I think it's Romans chapter 11, verse 24. He said, this is the covenant I will make with them after that I take away this. Put up Romans chapter 11 for me. I'm guessing here, but I believe I know this. Romans chapter 11. I have a lot more to say. I'm not going to get through today. Romans chapter 11. They fall asleep by then? Amen. Romans chapter 11 and verse 24. He says, I'm going to make this covenant with you when I take away your sin. Okay? 24. That's Romans 11. No, I said 11, 24. Go to 12, 24. Maybe I have the wrong scriptures. Somebody with a good Bible story, it's called a final scripture. I thought it was 11, 24. But this is 
is what God said. I, I'm doing this because I want to teach you. He said, I'm going to make this covenant with you after I take away your sin. So your covenant is not even kicked in until he takes your sin away. That's why he said in the covenant, I will not remember sin. This is so good, it's hard to receive. If you, if you hear me, say amen. amen. In the covenant now, we're talking about your covenant, the power of your covenant, right? All your successes, all your victories are going to be in your covenant, right? Amen. You have to get this down, man. You, you, you have to understand that God says on the foundation of this thing, I'm not going to make this covenant until after your sin has been paid for. So when I make the covenant, I will not remember sin. Because Jesus made one offering for sin forever and then sat down at the right hand of God. So when, before by one offering, he had perfected forever, then we were sanctified. So your covenant, move me from here, Holy Spirit. So your covenant stands on this foundation that I will not remember sin. So now what do you and I have to do? All you have to do is believe. Amen. What do you have to believe? His promises. Can you believe what, what, can you believe what God said about you instead of how you feel about yourself? Here's a promise. Fear not, for I'm with you. Amen. Be not dismayed. Amen. I am your God. Yes, I will strengthen you. Amen. Yeah, I will help you. Yeah, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. That's a promise. Amen. All the promises of God in Christ are in him, yea, and, and amen. amen. So since God cannot lie, walk with me, gentle love. Since God cannot lie, if I'm happy to grow up here, say amen. amen. Since God, it's going to be hard for you to receive, but I'm going to shove it down your spirit until you get it, because you ought to be tired of feeling guilty about nothing. Everybody in this world making mistakes, everybody doing something wrong. Why is it that the church letting the preachers and the people outside the church tell you how to be condemned? They ain't going to church, they don't know your God, they tell you how you can serve your God. You can't serve God like that. Who says that? He says, whosoever will, let him come. So when you come in, he purifies you. So how come somebody in the world will tell you you shouldn't be going to church based on things they don't understand about you? Monsieur, I know that God can't lie now. I know he's going to do what he says. Amen. So if he said, he will help me. Amen. I know he's going to help me. Yes, sir. Now here's the situation. How do I receive this help in my covenant? First thing I got to know is I have no sin issue. So I got to know, what do I go for help? Well, what's God's righteous judgment of help for another? Psalm 121. 1. I will look to the hills, for man's come my help. My help comes from the Lord, which created the heavens and the earth. Now, general love, that is God's final decision on his ability to help. His righteous judgment, his final decision said, when you need help, it's going to come from him. I'm preaching good, baby. Pray for me. Can I say it again, Shipman? If you believe God's word. There's a difference now if you come to church to dance or to look for your girlfriend. But if you believe. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. If you believe God's word, if you know that God can't lie, God said, Here's my final judgment. When you need help, come to me. Amen. I'm the creator of the heaven and the earth. Your help comes from me. Oh, if you believe that now, if you know God can't lie, then why are you sorry for yourself instead of running to the throne when you need help? Why call your neighbor who's going to talk about you so you can hang up? Why call somebody and say, child, you know, I'm in trouble. Yeah? Child, sister, I'm praying for you. The minute you have the phone, child, let's pray for sister so-and-so. You know, she having trouble. Next thing you know, your business is all over Miami because you went to the wrong avenue for help. My help come. He says that he's a present help for me in trouble. Psalm 46, 1. So I know that he is my help. Covenant right. Excuse me, I just believe it. I know that when I'm in trouble, he's a present help. In a time of trouble. Because he told me in Psalm 91, because you have set your love upon me, will I honor you? I will set you on high because you'll know my name. You will call upon me and I will answer you. I will be with you in trouble. I will live you in honor. I know that's the truth because he said it. And since I believe everything he said is true, I believe that. So since I know now that he's a present help for trouble, I have to know where to go to get his help. And the book says, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and 
divine grace to help us in the time of need. Oh God, I feel like preaching. I feel some fire coming up in me. I feel like I'm here by myself too, but I feel like preaching. See, I'm going to work the word. Because the word says I have a covenant of right to the hell. The thing is what he said, under the seed of Abraham, fear not. The book tells me in Galatians chapter 3 verse 26, if I be help Christ, then I'm Abraham's seed. And I'm an heir according to the promise. Glory to God. So I know that every promise of God belongs to me. 